Hey there, Sam. So far, we have been creating or updating our model's record directly in our controller. This is generally okay when we are writing a small app. However, as our app grows larger and larger, we might want to create our model or update our model in multiple places other than the controller. In that situation, we only got two choices. One is to copy this block of code. Two is to create a generic function to create our model. Copying and pasting code in programming is a big no-no. So let's go with option two. To implement option two, I want to introduce you a software pattern called the repository pattern. A software pattern is a way to write code or a code design paradigm so that the code in our software will be more maintainable in the long run. And to simplify, a repository is a class that handles operations related to our model. So if we're going to create a repository for our post model, the post repository will contain methods that create or update our post. Let's give it a shot. I'll create a new folder in our app directory and I'll call it repositories. And then I'll create a new PHP class called post repository. Within our post repository, there are three main methods that we want to implement. The create method, update method, and delete method. And now you might be wondering, hey Sam, why don't we have any read method that gets data from our database? And my answer is, you can put in some read methods in our repository if you want. However, for me personally, Eloquent has already provided a lot of helper methods to get our model records. And whenever we want to query something, the query condition is always different. So it just makes more sense for me to write Eloquent's query directly rather than putting a logic inside the repository. Anyway, let's get started on writing our repository. To implement our create method, we'll simply copy and paste our code from our post controller. And we'll get our create method to accept an argument called attributes. So instead of request, we'll refactor it into getting the data from the attribute array. Now Laravel has a helper function called dataGet that lets us to easily get a value from an array by the key. The first argument is our target array, which will be attribute in our case. The second argument is the key. And the third argument is the default value. So for title, I'll give it a default value of untitled. And I'll refactor the rest of the code to use the data get helper function. Once that's done, we'll go back to our controller and refactor our store method to use the post repository. So I'll inject an instance of the post repository in the argument and call the correct method from the repository. And in the create argument, we'll call the only method on the request to filter out the request body that we want, which in our case here will be title, body, and user IDs. And that is pretty much it. Let's test our code. We'll go to Postman and send a post request to the post endpoint. Set up the request body. Click on the send button. And we get a response. That means our code is working as before. Great. Let's go ahead and implement the update method and the delete method as well. Again, for the update method, I'll copy and paste the code from our controller and do a little bit of refactoring. First, to grab the attribute values, sync the user ID relationship. and wrap our logic within a transaction. Throw an exception when our model is not updated. And finally, return the updated post. And back in our controller, we'll refactor the code to use the post repository. And we'll do the same for the destroy method. Okay, now let's test our code. 
Again, we'll go to Postman and try to patch the post that we just created with a different title. Click on the Send button. And we get a response with the updated title. Great. Let's try to delete our post. I'll switch the method to delete. Click on the Send button again. And we get success in our body. Beautiful. OK, now let's go back to our repository and do a bit of maintenance work. First of all, we're going to have a lot of repository in our app. Ideally, one repository per model. So it makes sense for us to create a base repository class so that all of our repositories will extend from it. Let's create a new class. I'll call it base repository. And it will be an abstract class. Next, we'll define our methods as abstract methods to force the child classes to implement them. Now we go back to our post repository and make it extend from our base repository class and refactor our type hint to stop PHP from throwing us an error. And that's it. That's our post repository. We still need to create our post repository and users repository. I'll leave that as an exercise to you. Now, some people might argue that creating a repository unnecessarily increases the complexity of our code. Their argument is valid, and I won't say they are wrong. In my opinion, I like the fact that we can manage our model operation in one place. And that really is the problem that the repository pattern is trying to solve. In the end, it is your personal preference to decide what tools to use. Key takeaway for this lesson, repository is a class that takes care of model operations. It manages model operations in one place and hence improve the maintainability of our app. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.